Good morning, good morning, good morning again. Another glorious and awesome day to know God and to know His Word and to spend time in His Word. I wanted to share something. Uh, I just thought it was kind of neat. We were talking about uh, about things of education recently, and something in Daniel struck a, stood out to me. Where it starts out in Daniel chapter 1, talks about in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem, besieged it. The Lord gave Jehoiakim, king, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God. And he carried them to the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. So Nebuchadnezzar took over Judah, basically, took some of the stuff. And then the king spoke to Ashpenaz, the master of his officials, that he should bring some of the sons of Israel and some of the king's descendants and some of the nobles, youths in whom was no blemish, who were handsome and skillful in every branch of wisdom and gifted with knowledge and discerning knowledge. And such had ability to serve in the king's palace. So that he said to take some of the guys, some of the sons, and particularly those who were of noble descent, those who had proven themselves to be... Uh, understanding and to show some knowledge so they can't couldn't have been too too young you know he wasn't taking like three-year-olds but they were kids still right they were youth and he took them so that he might teach the learning and the language of the Chaldeans basically he said we want to take your kids and we want to bring them into our school and indoctrinate them teach them the language and the learning. And you can understand the Chaldeans were not uh, Jude Judeans. They weren't Jude. They weren't worshiping Yahweh, the true God. They were worshiping whatever. So they were probably teaching them some of the soothsayer stuff, some of the mystic arts, some junk. Yeah, this sounds kind of familiar, right? Some junk was being taught in their schools. And these kids had to sit there and learn it. And in fact, they had a boarding school. They had no other influences left. They were raised up, thank God, but all they had was indoctrination school. And he said, among these sons of Judah was Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, to whom the commander of the officials gave the names, Belteshazzar, uh, Rakshak, and many, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So he changed their names even change their atmosphere, change what he was instructing them, was changing their language to a degree, or teaching them a different language, and change their names. That sounds like a, a mind control game, like a brainwashing tactic, right? That's pretty extreme for instruction for a young man to have, be surrounded by something completely new and essentially forced to learn something. But, it says in verse 8, but, sometimes the word but is very useful, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's food nor with the wine that he drank. So he's talking about the food and the wine particularly. But the first part of that, Daniel purposed in his heart. It really struck me how much uh, the word of God, faith in the word of God, and faith in God, is a keeping value. It kept these four these four young men. They were sent to school. They were sent to a, a full immersion school. But did they come out fully like the Chaldeans? They were respectful. They were useful. But when they came out, you know, as they went through, it says in verse 17, God, as for these four youths, God gave them knowledge and skill and every branch of learning and wisdom. God instructed them. They were putting their trust in God. How much can we and can we have confidence in our youth to trust in God and to be instructed by him? Now, I am 100% for having a proper education in our schools, having a total revamp of the system and bringing it to godly values and to instructing in godliness. But we know from the word here, and we can have confidence and we can set our faith in that God can keep our children. God can keep our youth. God can keep us. I'm still young. I keep saying that. You know, it's not just a claim. It's a fact. 
God calls us little children. We're still young, even though we grow up. And we can still have the mindset that God can keep us and that he can instruct us and he can bring us through as we purpose in our hearts to serve him. Just like uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood against the playing of the trumpets and the worshiping of the idol. And just like Daniel continued for year and after year and decade after decade. And he stood up and he went to the window and he prayed right in front of everyone, basically. He said, I'm going to keep doing what I do before my God. And nothing's going to stop me. And the lions had no power over him. And when the kings came and went and the officials came and went, Daniel was still going strong. Amen. Be blessed.